Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Joe, where I help you make better coffee and give you honest reviews. Today, I am first announcing that we are giving away a Terra Cafe. I know a lot of followers have come over for you know uh, the super autos and stuff like that. I don't use one personally on my day to day. They're great for some people, but I wanted to give back to the community for everyone that's uh, joined, especially for that espresso machine particularly. So we are giving one away, me and Lifestyle Labs together. I'll leave the link uh, in the description below so you can click on that and enter to win. The giveaway is on the 18th, so definitely join before that period. All right, so today what I'm doing is I'm comparing the Chiado versus the uh, DF64, the Turin DF64. There's a lot of different names for it, but this one's the DF64. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of things. I'm going to show the bouldering on both. I'll show uh, a shot side by side. And then I'm going to go through just like the aesthetics and some of the things, some of the kind of points on like how easy it is to use and, and really the user experience. To me, I think grinders in general, the user experience is the most important part. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's first talk about like kind of getting into the machine and stuff like that. For most folks, maybe you'll never get inside of your uh, grinder, but it is good occasionally to clean it out and stuff like that. And um, and for a cup for, for adjusting too, I'll talk about that. But the biggest thing, uh, the difference is this one just screws off. You just turn it a bunch until eventually you pop it off. You can get inside there, clean it out, and pop it back on. It's actually relatively simple. Um, not that the Chiado is super difficult, but you do have to uh, unscrew some pieces there and then, um, you know, pop it back on and screw it back on. So it isn't quite as simple as just, you know, using your hands to undo it. You got to get some tools out to, to get that done. Um, the other piece I want to say too is that getting the, if you ever replace your burr set, Getting new burrs in here for me has been extremely difficult. I've tried multiple different burr sets. SSP burrs worked pretty good, but it really was difficult to, to change them out and get them lined up correctly. Uh, whereas on the DF64, it's maybe something you definitely should do on the DF64 to get it lined up, um, aligned, but it's a lot easier in my opinion to get them aligned on that grinder. So. Um, the other thing is adjusting grinds uh, is way easier um, on the DF64. You just turn this left or right, and that will adjust how fine you're going to get on your, your grinds. On here, you got to go you know, left to right, and right now it's not too difficult to move it, but you, 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 you kind of tend to make a jump. I don't know. It's, it's not quite as smooth as just turning a little bit one way or the other. You, you end up kind of pushing a little too hard and pushing it maybe further than you wanted. So that's something to note. And then the other thing that I really, really hate about this grinder is if you do take it apart and you want to clean it out, um, the downside is if you, for some reason, need to go finer than one turn left to right or coarser, for example, you really have to pop this thing off. You have to unscrew these uh, screws here, and then you have to keep adjusting. So you can go one turn all the way there, and then put them back in, and then go one turn again, put them back in. Like So if you have to go three or four turns, it's just taking you a really long time to adjust, especially if you're replacing the burrs. So when I had to do it, I had to do that like three or four times before I got to a good spot for, for the burrs that I replaced it with. Um, not that it's a big deal once you're, you're set up, but I will say that, um, you know, it's kind of a single use grinder. You're gonna set it to one level here and you could really only do espresso with it. If you're somebody who likes to maybe do some filter coffee occasionally, maybe a French press, espresso, mocha pot, any of that type of stuff, you have infinite range on the DF64. You don't, you technically do, but it's just a huge pain in the butt to have to go back and forth and unscrewing and screwing back in just to get filter coffee. So that's one real big gripe I have with this thing. 
Okay, so let's talk about retention a little bit. The DF64 is a zero retention uh, coffee grinder because it has the bellows. You can kind of push all the coffee through it. It's not technically, you know, down to the micron or something like that. Like no coffee's left in there. There is still some. You'll get like, you know, point point one grams, uh, maybe point two grams occasionally, and that's not a huge deal. That's and that's what I've noticed is generally it's about point one gram difference, um, but which is negligible i don't know if you probably could not taste that in the cup uh 0.1 gram that's like super minute uh, on the chiato on the other hand it's not a single dose grinder so you know that's part of it but it does make it really difficult to dial in because there is actually a lot of retention on this grinder because it doesn't have this angle if you notice on the df64 there's kind of an angle so gravity pushes the grinds out naturally sort of whereas on the chiato it's you know, it's flat, it's, you know, perpendicular and flat. So it tends to hold grinds in some weird pockets and stuff that you have a hard time getting all of it out. I've had as much as a gram, a gram or a gram and a half sometimes get stuck somewhere in the, its grinder. So it is kind of difficult to dial in, especially if you're single dosing to dial in because um, you end up, when you have that much retention, when you make an adjustment, a lot of times those grinds get pushed out first uh, from the previous shot, and then your new grinds start to come out. So dialing in can kind of be a bit of a challenge on something like this. To me, I think this grinder probably is better suited for a small cafe that they're using the same coffee all the time, and they're doing the same thing with it all the time, and that you're not really adjusting this all that often. And if you do, you're fine with pulling like, you know, five shots before you're, you know, comfortable with what the adjustment that you made. So keep that in mind. And obviously it's big and stuff like that. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're considering the grinders, any grinder for that matter is, is this going to be suited nicely for my house? Is this good for what I'm looking to do? So, um, yeah, I would say the Chiato in general is probably not the best grinder for an at home grinder. On the left here, we have the Chiato, and on the right, we have the DS64. There is kind of a sort of clumpy nature of that, but not really. It's it's pretty fluffy in general. Uh, over here, you'll you'll see some pretty nice, uh, you know, ground coffee there, and it is fluffy on the center. But as you see down here, there's a lot of bouldering going on. So when you actually pull a shot. Uh, you'll end up getting some over-extracted um, pieces, especially if you're not doing any WDT. So um, I think the DF64 grinds actually do look a little nicer here. Okay, so let's talk about the aesthetics. Um, the Chiato is a uh, chunkier. It's really, really big. It's a, basically the size of an espresso machine. I mean, this is bigger and heavier than a lot of espresso machines I've used. Uh, it's almost the size of a Gaggio Classic Pro. So uh, this is a big grinder. Um, the other thing too is there's not uh, a lot of color options. I think it really just comes in this. I think there might be a silver one, um, but yeah, it's not like you can get any color you want. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the DF64, it, you know, maybe the build quality isn't quite as bad. Like this is plastic here, whereas this is fully metal. But honestly, it's still a relatively heavy coffee grinder for, you know, the price and the size. And, um, you know, it's still pretty aesthetically nice looking, in my opinion. There is metal. There's, you know, the, the plastic doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. And you can get it in any color, like, you could possibly think of. You can get it. They, are, they all come wrapped, like 3M wrapped. So you can get yellow, green. You can get, like, crazy with the colors um, and, and the different looks you want for this grinder. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, it's just so much smaller, so you can kind of use the counter space. You have a lot more areas you can put it. Um, it's just, it's just nice to have that way. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about general like user experience. I would say that for an at-home grinder, I don't want to talk about a like using it in the store because I've never used, I've never been in a barista situation. But as an at-home user. The DF64, especially for the price at $270 to $230, is better. This is like a $1,000 grinder, $1,000 plus dollar grinder. This is like, you know, $500 or less. It's 
and it's nicer, it's better for most general users at home. Uh, I think there is plenty of reasons to go with it over this. Um, the workflow is simpler. You, you know, you get the coffee, you pump it out. Um, and if you need to make an adjustment, you just turn it a little bit and the next shot that you pull is really going to be with just the adjustment that you made. Whereas on the Chiado, you know, there's so much retention. There's a lot of, you know, variables there that it's kind of hard to dial in and get, get in a happy spot with this grinder, uh, for an at home experience. Um, with that said though, let's actually make a side by side shot. We'll taste them and I'll talk about um, my final thoughts on both these grinders. Okay, so I made two shots. We got uh, about like 38 grams out in both. Um, the Chiado uh, seemed to get almost like no crema for some reason, kind of odd. Well, I, it did sit a little longer. There was a little uh, crema on top. This one is retaining the crema a little bit more. Um, take my first sip here. nice very smooth has very traditional um you know espresso flavors uh, i will say the flat burrs do always seem ten tend to seem to get more of those like chocolatey um more uh kind of velvety flavors out of espresso whereas the conical burrs are a little bit um some will say harsher but i think sometimes they do tend to get a little bit more of the like citrus notes out um so let me give a sip of this Yeah, I think that the, the Chiado didn't come out that great. Um, you know, obviously, too, like like I said, dialing in is a lot more difficult on the Chiado. So, like, I could maybe dial it in to get a lot closer to this, but it's just a lot harder. Yeah, the DF64 came out really, really nice. Um, has a lot more body, um, a lot more velvetiness. It's, it's nice. Um, but yeah, I, I think overall, to give my final thoughts on these grinders, I didn't think I'd like, this is my first single doser, and I didn't think that I'd like single dosing, but I've come to enjoy it a little bit more uh, than I originally thought, um, just because it's nice to be able to dial in. It's nice to be able to play around with espresso. If you're really into espresso like I am, it's nice to be able to make a big adjustment or a minor adjustment and get exactly that in the cup. Whereas, you know, a lot of grinders, even, 
even super nice ones that aren't single dosers, you do kind of have some of the, that grind retention getting into your next shot. So it's really hard to make those big adjustments without using a lot of coffee waste and stuff. So I really do like that about, about that grinder. Not to mention, I think this thing is punching above its weight class. I, I'm super impressed by it. I'll probably give a, a full review later, um, but I, I enjoy using this machine. There's different quirks about it, but I generally don't, uh, I can look past the quirks pretty easy on this grinder. Whereas this one, I think actually, even though it's way more money, has a hell of a lot more quirks and uh, screwy things with it than the, um, the F64. So all in all, if I was to recommend one, especially for a home, go with that. If you're maybe doing, you know, light commercial stuff, maybe go with the Chiato. I, I'm not going to tell you to, I don't know enough about commercial grade stuff, like what you'd use in a barista setting, but, um, I could imagine this one being a little bit nicer. So again, don't forget to subscribe, click the link in the description below to enter the giveaway, and I'll catch you in the next video.